you know what was funny? Fred Van Vliet in the post-game press conference was like, when Norman Powell got the steal and went on the fast break and dunked the ball, he looked back and stared at the bench, and Fred Van Vliet was like, why are you looking at me? I ain't the one who traded you. <laughs> Welcome back to the Airborne Podcast. I'm your host, Ajit. That's big boy Braz with us. We got Thanos back on the podcast. He was away for one, but he's back at it like a bad habit. Yep. The Raptors lose again to the Portland Trailblazers. And now they're 10 games under 500 with the record of 18 and 28, still 11th in the Eastern Conference. They had 74 points in the first half, only scored 10 in that third quarter. And that was the ball game. That's what gave Portland the, the momentum to take that, to steal that win or steal that game. And there are so many moments we can talk about, but before we get into the negatives, I did see some positives in this game, so I want to start off on a positive note. The Raptors, Rodney Hood played amazing yesterday. Yeah. I believe he had 13 points for the game. Yeah, he did, yeah. 13 points, and he had a halftime buzzer beater. Yeah, that was amp. His defense, that, was, that, was, that was sick. His defense was stellar, and... With Gary Trent Jr., he's he's still trying to find his his role right now. You know, they're still trying to get used to the system. Once they do, they'll get a lot more open shots. Kyle Lowry, unfortunately, wasn't in the game, so I thought that would maybe help Gary Trent Jr. get more shots, but it didn't, as he only had six points and seven rebounds for the game. Mm-hmm. And then CJ McCollum. I mean, the man put the dagger in us the first game, and he took over in that fourth quarter when they needed him. And he even ended that game off with a little shimmy dance after that and one play. And I know, Bravs, you tell me, the Raptors right now, they do not look like they're looking for a center. I was kind of, sorry, I'm gonna, before you go, I'm going to cu- cut you off. But, you know, like I was kind of telling someone this off, t- off camera that if we wanted to win or at least go towards a pair spot, we would, we would have, like, picked up the center right now. We would have picked up that guy from – wasn't Gordon Yang? That's his name? Gord- Gordon Yang, yeah. Yeah, we would, him up. We, we, we would have done something to grab Drummond. We would have made a splash to, to grab, you know, Aldridge or, or like, Blake Griffin. You know what I mean? We would, we would have done something. But, like, we haven't done anything. There's been no noise or speculation of, of us talking to them besides the Gordon Yang issue. Sorry. Ever. But, yeah, like, like, so, to me, it seems like we're, we're – Low key tanking, right? Low key tanking to get to that spot where we can grab a big or grab a five without trading or losing up any assets. That's the assets. That's what I'm thinking. But it's kind of stupid because, like, then, like, why, why we, like, we should have traded Larry. Might as well trade Larry, grab some pieces. I think Ajit told me that mm-hmm. off, off camera that we could have got pieces that would have fit our system, right? But long story short, like, this whole, you know, rebuild, rebuild aspect or, or like tanking, not really cool with it. Like, I feel like we're still, we're good enough to, to compete. We just need that missing piece. Well, to address your center position situation, Aaron Baines yesterday, he played pretty solid. He had a nice Yeah, he did. Drop. He did. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he was out there setting screens and stuff. Obviously, he's not a starting caliber center anymore. I feel like he can still be a valuable piece off the bench. But with Gorgie Jang, he unfortunately signed with the San Antonio Spurs. The Raptors were in the mix, apparently from what I saw in the article. But on his end, he chose the Spurs. It is what it is. Kind of confusing, though. Like, why would he pick the Spurs? Like, like it's kind of it's kind of odd to me. Yeah. Like, because, well, what, yeah. Are you, what are you getting out of the Spurs, though? Well, I mean, they have they have Jakob Perto, but also he's a different type of center yeah. for them. Who can he's a volleyball the- player, yo. A little volleyball player. He can spread the floor by shooting the three. He can also mm-hmm. he has a he has a mid range game. He's a lot more offensive minded than Jakob Pertl, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that kind of brings a different element to their roster. And you know, it is what it is. They got him with Lamarcus Aldridge and Blake Griffin. I mean, they weren't going to come to us no matter how many times. We yeah, them. regardless of what happens, I don't think they would have chosen us. The LA officially signed with the with the Nets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Yo, with, yeah. Adam Silver, same with Drummond. Drummond Adam- signed with the uh, with the Lakers, right? Yeah. Drummond? Yeah. 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 But what I was going to say was LaMarcus Aldridge, Blake Griffin, Andre Drummond, those guys are looking for title contenders to sign with on a minimum deal. You know, they're ring chasing right now, and it is what it is. None of those guys, when it came to the Raptors, the way the Raptors yeah. roster is constructed right now, 
But in terms of Kyle Lowry being traded, I feel like there's two reasons to why he didn't get traded. One was because they felt like if they did get Nickel for the dime, like they felt like Lowry's contributions to that contending team would be a lot more than what we would get back in return. Mm-hmm. And I also feel like Bradley Beal's contract is coming up in 2022. So I feel like he might have kept Larry to keep this team still interesting because everyone knows Larry's already won, been there, done that, won a championship. His leadership is, you know, off the charts. And if we can get someone like Bradley Beal in the offseason of 2022, that puts us back mm-hmm. in contention. And then centers and stuff will come to us, you know? Like, we don't need to... I, I feel like because this feels like a lost season based on how our, everything's going and the way Brooklyn's constructed, the way Milwaukee's competing, the way Philadelphia is at the top of the East, I feel like they know that no matter what seeding we get at the bottom, we're not going to get out of the first round. So you might as well keep the valuable asset in Kyle Lowry, see what comes in the offseason, and if it's necessary, do a sign and trade if the price is right. Otherwise, sign him to a, a two-year deal and keep him on a roster and hopefully get Bradley Beal in the offseason and retool this team really quickly to the point where we get back to contention because we have all the other pieces with OG, Pascal, and Fred Van Vliet, right? The only thing we're missing is a center. You keep telling us every day. I mean, we all keep talking about it, but I feel like Masai is looking at the long-term plan rather than the short-term plan. Sure. And without getting the center, we're still tanking, but no one thinks we're tanking, if it makes sense, because we're competing mm-hmm. with all these teams now with their healthy lineup again, right? For sure, no, for sure. But one more thing I want to add is, you know, like, well, not add, but I want to ask you a question. You think Larry, Larry will, will come back in the offseason, or you think he'll be asking for a max contract or something stupid? I think Larry's going to get like a two year, $50 million deal, something like what Colby got towards the end of his career, mm-hmm. and where people were bashing him about why are you paying him so much when he's already done. But Larry still has a lot left in the tank. He's like Steve Nash, he ages sure. like fine wine. And I feel like he still has enough to give to our team, whether it's a contender or not, or a side and trade to a team that he wants to go to. And he'll work with us well enough to the point where we can do a side and trade and get the assets from another team. I hope they're at least trying to get cousins, at least. That's right. I know Celtics are trying to go for him, but I feel like if we try to give him a pitch, I mean, who knows? We can have him paired up with Beal and Siakam in the, like, by 2022, I hope. Yeah. You're talking about DeMarcus this season? Yeah, no, no, I'm just talking about just getting DeMarcus this season to see how he plays. And then if he plays, he plays like how he used to play, then, I mean, we can sign him, right? I doubt that. I, I doubt all, all cousins will ever come back into play. But... What do you mean? Actually, what do you, we don't even need old cousins. Just like maybe like like a cousins, I guess, like what, 15 and 10? Yeah, for sure. At best. Like, I'm cool with that. Yeah, I mean, a guy that can definitely offensively for guys like driving the paint like Larry Van Vliet, OG, mm. Pascal. What I did want to say was, and I want to get back to the game. Yeah. The Raptors, I mean, the Raptors had control of this game in the first half completely. With that Rodney Hood buzzer beater at the half, they were up 74-60, and I believe it was a season high in, in points at the half. And then to have a complete meltdown and, and lose their offense completely for like four minutes straight, in that third quarter, gave Portland some breathing room to come back in that game and, and mm-hmm. eventually take the lead and went on like a 14 0 run. And, and they had the, so many turnovers in that quarter. And the Stanley Johnson was an unsung hero who got the bucket for us to stop yeah. that run. Yeah. He played well yesterday. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one more thing before you go is, you know, the return of Powell, right? It was Powell's first game back against us. It was kind of a. Kind of like a bittersweet moment because it, bittersweet, it, that's the word bittersweet, not sweet sour. <laughs> sweet sour chicken. <laughs> bittersweet, no, was, bittersweet moment. It was a bittersweet moment because Powell and the Raptors didn't get like enough time to kind of let us sink in. It was so early that he even went on our side to start yeah. the game for the jump ball. <laughs> but Norman Powell wasn't really that effective. He missed some crucial free throws to ice I the game. Ta- oh, I was telling my brother off camera like before he went. For the free throws, I'm like, yo, watch, he's gonna miss these two free throws, and he missed it. I yeah, was like, yo, yeah. the same shit's gonna happen on another team either way, right? He's still, uh, if you looked under his jersey, the Portland jersey, he had a Raptors jersey. He had a Raptors, yeah. Oh, he did? <laughs> no, 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 I just the way he was playing. The way he was playing. No, 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 I'm <laughs> <laughs> End of the game when all the teams embrace when both teams embraced their old players, it was like a heartwarming moment. You know, Powell was just dapping everybody. Yeah, it was sad to see. You know, it is what it is, but. 
I mean, that team, their offense is lethal. Portland is my dark horse of the West. Even before Powell, I had them on my list as a dark horse. But watch them. They're make some noise. Melo is underrated. Hooded Melo is underrated. McCollum is underrated. And Dame is underrated. Those three guys are super underrated. He had a quiet 20 points in that game. He didn't hit that many threes up to, up to the third quarter, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was... But he was bombing those long range threes. You people yeah, sleep on him for half a second and then he just launches it and makes it somehow every time. Yeah. Hoodie Mellow's lethal, but Braided Mellow's on another level. 100 <laughs> percent That was that that was throwback mellow, rookie year mellow. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the Raptors, you know, they dropped this one on a back to back. They got Detroit coming up. Hopefully they don't lose to them and, and get swept by Detroit because that's like a worst. That's like the that's the I worst, think, you know. That's like more adding more salt to the wound with Detroit. Yeah, no. Wayne Casey, the former Raptors coach, getting another W. Corey Joseph is going to be in that squad today. So I think my biggest takeaway was the third quarter meltdown, right? Is what hurt us, right? Like we were, we were talking earlier, 41 points in the first, 30 plus in the second, 10 points in the third. Like that's not going to cut it, right? There was a lot of, you know, a lot of things that went wrong for the Raptors when it came down to the crucial moments. Missed free throws and you know un- unnecessary turnovers. It was a, it was like a combination of all. Like there was a few plays, for example, when Stanley Johnson had a three, an open three, and he could have took it. He saw Fred Van Vliet, and Fred Van Vliet took that extra second to adjust himself to shoot it, and there was three in the key. Turned the ball over there, and then a couple of possessions where they got the defensive stop, but they weren't able to get the ball possession. Mm-hmm. And then when they went to review it, the Raptors didn't get the call in their favor, and it was Portland's ball. Fortunately, they missed some free throw down the stretch, so we had a chance to still win the game. Yeah. But eventually, Dame Lillard went to the line at the end and iced the game with, like, four seconds left. The Raptors, though, like, for the for the first, second, and fourth quarter, they, were, they scored 30-plus points. Mm. But that third quarter... It was a third quarter, yeah. Yeah, third quarter. 14-0 run and only scoring 10 points on the Raptors' end. And letting Portland score 23 is the reason why. Like that, we lost the game in that third quarter, third quarter. I don't know how many times I could say that, but that's been the theme of this season. Like we've always had these offensive droughts where we feel like we have the game in hand, and all of a sudden it's just a complete meltdown out of nowhere. Yeah, one quarter like, just kills yeah. it. And they can't make a shot for their life. And the way that three pointer shot this, like in the NBA nowadays, yeah, anything under 20 points is like you can come back like this, and. CJ McCollum showed that yesterday. The backcourt for the Portland Trailblazers had a total of 45 points together. Damian Lillard in 37 minutes at 22 points, three rebounds, 11 assists. And CJ McCollum in 38 minutes at 23 points, seven rebounds, five assists, two steals, three blocks. CJ McCollum was a closer for that game. He even had a block on Van Vliet. And he started saying, get that shit out of here. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Covington had a pretty underrated game. The field goal percentage wasn't there, but like he got he got 13 points, 12 rebounds, and you got a, you got like four blocks. In 36 minutes, he had 13 points, 12 rebounds, two assists, three steals, four blocks. He was a rebounding beast. Even on like little possessions, he would just put his hand and swipe the ball. Like he was being irritant on that end. There's so many of these guys that have like been um, like undrafted players. Yeah, who are doing some good big noises, right? Yeah, like undrafted players who are making a name for themselves, earning big time money from yeah. contracts. Like uh, Fred Van Vliet. A Robert Covington, a TJ McConnell, uh, a Spencer Dinwiddie, hey, yo. a Joe Harris, a Luar Kakarot, or whatever his name is in Brooklyn. Like, oh, I'm Brooklyn. <laughs> I'm not saying every single person undrafted, but I'm saying like these guys who were either undrafted or about to be bounced out of the league. Oh, true, mm-hmm. true. Like, you know, like they didn't have a role in the league and all of a sudden they find their niche. With yeah, the yeah. And then all of a sudden they just build a career for themselves and they become so invaluable. And a lot of these guys, because of the three-point shot being what it is now with Steph Curry and Dame Lillard and Clay Thompson and whatnot, like being snipers, like everyone just works on their three-point shot and now it's like everyone's yeah. valuable. Yeah. Sure, 100%. Like, like Robert Covington, right? Robert Covington, he's a nasty three-pointer, yo. Like he was on Philadelphia, but then got traded yeah. to Minnesota and the Jimmy Butler trade, but imagine how much they could have used him on Philadelphia right now. For the Raptors... Fred Van Vliet in 37 minutes had 20 points, five rebounds, eight assists with the steal. OG Ananobi in 38 minutes had 19 points, 10 rebounds, three assists and a steal. 
But the man had seven oh, turnovers. OG's, OG's, like, I can tell that OG's handles got a little bit better. Yeah, uh, I agree. From the past few games, like, I feel like he's getting more, he's being more aggressive now. Like, I've never seen this type of version of him, but I'm I'm glad that he's showcasing his handles more. Yeah, but the man had seven turnovers. Wait, what? <laughs> okay, yeah, take what I said back. <laughs> Pascal Siakam had... Pascal Siakam, 39 minutes, at 26 points, 8 rebounds, 2 assists. I was about to see Siakam smiling, yo. His shot, his shot's much quicker now. Like, I remember, I can compare it to, like, the Boston series. Mm-hmm. Like, his form was much more slower, but now it's, like, getting, it's going back to how it was before. Yeah, and, and he's yeah. picking up a bunch of good games now where he's yeah. looking like the old Spicy P. Yeah, I'm glad. Rodney Hood in 27 minutes in the second game as a Raptor at 13 points, 2 rebounds, a steal, and a block. Chris Boucher in 23 minutes. The last three or four games, he had 18 points in total off the bench. In this game, he had 18 points, 11 rebounds, and a block in 23 minutes. Yeah. Stanley Johnson, 20 minutes, scored 11 points, one rebound, two assists, two blocks. Cantor is killing us too, man. Like with the set, with the rebounding and stuff. Yeah, if Larry was there, he would abuse Cantor to the point where they had to take him out. If you remember the Boston series from oh, he's drives, drives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he'll, he'll do like a high pick and roll and he'll just make sure Cantor doesn't want to come out all the way and extend his defense, right? So Larry will either get that mid-range shot or he'll pull up for the three. I don't feel like Fred Van Vliet used that a lot last night. Yeah. yeah. I know Larry would have abused it, especially if he had Serge Ibaka still. I mean, Chris yeah. Boucher still works too, but Serge Ibaka and, and Larry abused him in, in the playoffs and with that play. That's where we miss, I miss Serge, man. I, yo, he's been quiet. There. I haven't heard anything about Serge Ibaka this season. Serge Ibaka's been out with back issues for like the last 10 games. He's been messing on my fantasy. That's why I know. He's, he's <laughs> shooting back on you. Our, our doctors will help him. Yeah, I know. That's the thing, right? Our doctors would have made that thing disappear in two days. Gary Trent Jr. scored in single digits the second game with the Raptors. 28 minutes, 6.7 rebounds. And Aaron Baines in 14 minutes only at four points. No rebounds, no assists, no steals, two blocks. I'm not giving up on Gary Trent, though. He'll find his groove eventually. Gary Trent will find a spot. He's capable of hitting 7, 8, 3. Yeah, he can create his own. He looks like he can create his own shot. Yeah, he's quick. Yeah. For the team stats, I wanted to get into that. For the Raptors, the Raptors as a team shot 45% from the field for the game, 39 of 87. They let Portland shoot 47% from the field for 46 of 97. Three-point shooting was horrific on both ends. Portland only shot 29%, 10 of 34 from beyond the arc. Toronto shot 14 of 42 for 33% from beyond the arc. Free throws, the Raptors again get more attempts than another team. Yeah, I know. I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four, right? 13 times something? Yeah. yeah. The mm-hmm. Raptors, for, this, for the third straight time, had more free throw attempts than their opposing team. They had 25, they were 25 of 33 from the line for 76%, which is also a killer for us. We we had crucial missed free throws that could have helped us potentially get the game closer or maybe even win the game. And Portland was 20 of 24 from the line for 83%. Rebounding wasn't a factor, even with Nurkic and Cantor on their side. They were only a plus two, 47 to 45. Offensive rebounds, they were only a plus one, 13 to 12. Assists, they were plus seven. They had 24. The Raptors had 17. Steals, Portland had seven. We had three, so they're a plus four. Blocks, they had 11. We had six. They were a plus five. Turnovers, we had 12. They had eight. They were a plus four. And points in the paint, they had 58. We had 48, so they were they were a plus 10. Second chance points and points in the paint. Well, points in the paint, we lost to Portland in that category, but... Sure, second- Cantor and what's his name? Um, Nurkic. Nurkic. Okay. Oh, the nasty. Those two are nasty. But even Covington, too, like, was getting extra possessions for them. Was this Nurkic's first game back, or was it? Second game, I think. Second game, oh, second, second game, second game. But, yeah, Covington was, like, getting all the little loose balls and, and helping their yeah. team get extra possessions while the Raptors are looking a little lazy on a few possessions there. On second chance points, Toronto Raptors had 22. Portland had 17. Raptors are plus five. Fast break points. Portland had six, Raptors had three, so Portland was a plus three. Points off turnovers, Portland had 10, Raptors had six, Portland was a plus four. And biggest lead for both teams was 11. Personal fouls, we had 20, they had 25. Portland scored 122 points and we scored 117. OG needs a huge shout out. His defense near the end was amazing. Like 
Yeah. We sat on CJ McCollum as like wicked. Yeah. So yeah. But he played some solid defense. Wait, who's guarding CJ McCollum the whole time? Was it him or Van Vliet? No, it was like both of them. CJ was had the ball for the last like 10, 12 seconds. Yeah, and yeah. then he guarded him and like but I think they got the ball back and made a shot after. Kind of like what he did to Devin Booker the previous game, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at the backcourts that are coming in to play the Raptors. First it was I mean the initial one was uh, Jamal Murray and Will Barton. Then you get Chris Paul and Devin Booker. Yeah. And now you're getting CJ McCollum, yeah, Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum, and a sprinkle of Norman Powell with the return of him coming back to play his whole team. It is what it is, man. We're 18 and 28, 11th in the Eastern Conference, like I mentioned. Season's not looking too good. We have about like 27 games left. We have 72 games for the season. We played 45, playing a 46 against the Pistons. I mean, I want to get into this real quick. Under the bus, who are we throwing? I want to say Freddie. Yeah. It's because of the fact that I feel like the third quarter, he, he was just jacking up a bunch of threes and they weren't. It just kind of messed us up. It kind of messed us up offensively. I, I would agree with that. I'm putting, I'm not putting Freddie alone, though. I'm throwing Aaron Baines on there. Even though he had a poster dunk almost. Yeah. A center with four points and no rebounds. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. There was a possession when he went to go grab the rebound. Remember when he got that... Um, was it? Uh, he went for the rebound and then it went out of bounds and then he, he, he like slapped him in the head. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that was Nurkic. Yeah, that was Nurkic. That was Nurkic. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was right. Okay. Yeah, yeah they did well, get the aggression, right? We, we, we were like really aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Like he just like, he's like, doomed to the floor. He saw Nurkic's buzz cut and he gave him a barber slap and then. <laughs> <laughs> I like your cut, G. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, and then the refs went to review it, gave Nurkic a technical. Dane's got a flagrant one. Nurkic, two technical free throws. Yeah, he did. I remember. Okay, so we're throwing uh, under the bus. We're gonna throw Aaron Baines, OG. I, don't know. I mean, sorry, no. Well, are we throwing OG because he has seven turnovers, or are we leave him off? No, no, no. Leave OG out. No. Okay, so Aaron Baines and Fred Van Vliet are going under the bus officially. Star yeah. player of the game. I'm gonna have to go with Pascal again for a third game. Yeah, Pascal. Yeah. Yeah, Pascal doing enough, you know. I'm gonna have to go with Pascal. I would have gave it to OG if he didn't get seven, seven turnovers. turnovers. Yeah. yeah. If, yeah. Didn't, if OG had an OB didn't get the seven turnovers, I would have gave him star player of the game, but. Pascal. I kind of want to put I kind of want to put Stanley in there too because Stanley kind of helped yeah. us out in the third and fourth quarter with those threes right. and like he wasn't consistent enough like he didn't if he had won this game I probably would have done it yeah but star player of the game three games in a row Pascal Siakam deserves it once again with twenty six points eight rebounds two assists in thirty nine minutes yeah any final thoughts for the game before we close this out you better whoop Detroit to us. But it's becoming a, a frustrating yeah. common trend, yo, of us just losing, losing, losing. We need some I don't salt. want to add more salt to the wound with us yeah. coming up two straight losses now and sure. on the second night of a back-to-back, losing to Dwayne Casey again and getting swept for a second season by him. I do not want to see that happen. I want to see Gary Trent step it up. I yeah, want yeah. To see 100%. Rodney Hood needs to come out and play. He's looking like a real good piece that we can keep off the bench. He's only 29 years old. Yeah. Uh, or 28, turning 29 this season. Yeah, he was good. Is Larry coming back? I don't know. His foot soreness, he might, he might not. But we could use him, obviously. Yeah. The Detroit Pistons don't have Del- DeLon Wright. They have Corey Joseph. So. Yeah. They got B. <laughs> Switch the Raptor point guard. They got B, and you know what that get, that guy did the the last yeah. game when we faced yeah. him? Did we have OG Ananobi, though, that game? I don't yeah. think we did. All right, so uh, it's yeah. a whole different story then. It's a whole different ball game. We didn't have OG the both those games against him. But oh, we didn't have Pascal either, right? The first time we played them, we didn't have Pascal, Van Vliet, or OG. And then mm-hmm. um, when we played them on St. Paddy's Day, we had Pascal and Van Vliet back. Oh, okay. That was the first game back. Oh, that was the first game, yeah, yeah. But OG wasn't back. OG will be back. Hopefully, Sadiq Bey blesses me up because he's on my fantasy. <laughs> I hope he blesses me up and we get the W. <laughs> yeah. But a happy world. Yeah, best of both worlds, right? For sure. That's it. Just need to come out with the W. Let's go. Yeah, we, we need that W. I don't want to. I don't want to see us tanky, bro, man. I, I'm I'm happy with the competitive games, but sometimes, eventually, I want to see these games translate into Ws, right? For yeah. sure. And Detroit is the worst team in the Eastern Conference. Like, if we can't beat them, we might as well just tank. If we get swept by Detroit, tank the season. Might as well. Yeah. But on that note, appreciate everyone for tuning in and checking out the podcast. If you haven't liked the video, like it already. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe already. What are y'all waiting for? Y'all slacking, bro. We'll be back with the post-game podcast after the Detroit Pistons game, hopefully with the W. Till then, 
Stay blessed, stay woke, and please stay safe. Peace.